Hello and welcome runners, I'm Coach Roberto Manje and today we're doing the TCS UC Marathon course strategy, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the running. We're super excited to have you here. Let us know where you're watching from, shout outs, send us your questions, and today I'm um, joined by my friend, Coach Ben. How are you doing, Coach Ben? Doing good, Roberto. Thank you so much, runners. So happy to have you here. You can feel the electricity in the air. We missed our marathon last year. We were at the finish line this morning. It is out there. It's ready to go. I'm excited. Yeah. Let us know if you're excited, if you're running, if it's your first, whether it's your first or your 10th. Um, there are, we found out earlier this morning, there are at least one or two people who are running it who ran the uh, 50, 50 years ago. So shout out to them. But uh, yeah, we're going to be going over course strategy, uh, what to do, what to avoid. And hopefully you get some tips that will help you have the best day um, you can on November 7th. What, what to do? Finish. That's a good start, right? Yeah, well, you, you got to start first, right? You got to start. So <laughs> before you finish, you got to start. So we're going to be going over that first. So uh, there's always a few things that we say, um, sort of our mantra when we do these in person at Jacob Javits or for our other marquee events, we always say three things. So Ben, start us off with the first one. Three things. The first one is don't race before the race. What does that mean? That means have your race day plan mapped out, ready to go. Make sure you know where your bus, your ferry, what time that is. Have all of your clothes laid out the night before. Make sure that your bib is pinned to your innermost layer. Whether it's looking a little bit brisk, you may have some layers on on top of that. So make sure wherever your bib is, it's next to your body on your innermost layer. Because you want to have all that mapped out. It's a long day to begin with. You're going to be on the bus or the ferry 5, 15, 6 o'clock in the morning. No need to rush around. You want to get to Fort Wadsworth with plenty of time so that you can sit down, relax, take a moment, take it all in. You worked hard to get there. 2020 was a long 14 years. And <laughs> 14 years ago, give or take. That, that's the math we're working with. <laughs> that's yeah. what we're going with today. But yeah, don't race before the race. Have all of that mapped out. That way when you can go to bed on Saturday night, everything's ready to go. When you wake up on Sunday morning, uh, you can get to Fort Wadsworth with as little stress as possible. What's the second mantra that we always talk about, Coach Berto? Uh, the second uh, mantra <laughs> is avoid the race before the... Oh, sorry. <laughs> it just came on the screen, so I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> We're going to uh, uh, nothing new on race day. Yeah, yeah. The first one, avoid the race before the race. The second one, avoid the race before the race. It's like Fight Club. There's uh, the first rule of Fight Club. But, yeah, no, you want to... Um, nothing new on races. So what that means, you know, earlier today we had um, our great friend Connor from New Balance. There'll be a lot of great New Balance merchandise at the expo, at the pavilion, at the run center, the New Balance run hub. Um, you know, buy whatever you want, buy it all, but just don't wear it on race day if you have not trained in it. So that means if you haven't had it to, you haven't consumed it in training for eating the night before, the morning of, the race day, don't. Same with hydration. Um, same with attire, shoes, socks, um, what you're going to wear. Just stick to what's worked for you on your training runs. Hopefully, you know, you've had several long runs and several months of training, so you kind of have taken that time to tweak what works. So don't try anything new on race day. There's a lot of horror stories of people out there trying new things because the elites are doing it or because they picked it up at the expo, and it's a risk that you run to potentially undo your race. So. <laughs> That's the second one. Ben, what's the, what's the yeah. third one? Are we going back to the first or are we going to the third? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, avoid the race before the race, avoid yeah. the race before the race, and avoid the race before the race. No, yeah, yeah. the final one is do not. Do not. Try not to. Do your best. Do not go out too fast. It's so much excitement. I mean, anyone who's done the TCS New York City Marathon before knows you're out there on Fort Wadsworth. You get in your crowd. They walk you up to the start line. There's this incredible anticipation. You see the Verrazano Narrows Bridge in front of you. And then not a gun, but a cannon goes off to get you started. And then who else better to play you out as you go out on the Verrazano Narrows? But Frank Sinatra will play you out onto the bridge. It is so easy to find yourself below your marathon pace, below the marathon effort. And you feel like a million bucks. Well, why? Because you're probably well tapered to get out there and you're ready to rock and roll. But you really want to keep those horses in the crowd. You want to save that energy for later. You know, the highest point of our race is the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Your first mile will be the peak, the apex, the tallest uh, hill you will have to climb in your 26.2 mile journey. You won't even feel it. You won't even know it because you'll be so excited. You'll be so in, you know, you know, anticipating that start line. But do everything in your power to be to go out as easy as you can. You could be up to a minute slower than your marathon goal pace. That's fine. People are running by you, let them go. Remember what they're wearing because you'll probably see them in Long Island City, maybe on First Avenue, later in the race. Um, but take it back, take it all in. Get you cross over the bridge, you'll have beautiful views of the skyline. But yeah, don't go out too fast. Take it all in and just breathe and relax. Yeah. Have a good day. 
Spot on, nothing new on races. So before we get to the official start, this is obviously all part of core strategy, but you know, we'd be remiss if we didn't um, inform you viewers out there, especially if you have not picked up your bib yet. Um, obviously, today's the first day of the expo, so most of you haven't, and you're planning on picking up today, maybe tomorrow or Saturday, definitely no later than that. So uh, Coach Ben, take us through some of the updates, uh, you know, with in regards of face covering, vaccinations, what could people expect going into the expo? Yeah, definitely 2020 g gave us a lot of, you know, cur cur curve balls, as curveballs are still coming out, but 2021 is all about safety. We want to make sure that you get to the start line and ready to run your race. So things to keep in mind, for runners that are picking up your bib inside the Javits Center, you will have to show your proof of vaccination. So whether that's your actual vaccine card, government approved app, whatever the case may be, you will have their photo ID as well. Um, runners who are be, uh, showing the proof of the negative COVID test, you'll be picking up your bib on Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Saturday outside of Jacob Javits. Um, you'll be out, there'll be an area out there to pick that up. Um, anybody who will be going inside the Javits, uh, the Javits Center to pick up your, uh, your bib, you will have to have on face coverings at all times at the expo. So make sure you have that on there. Um, on public transportation as well, when you're going the ferry or the bus to get to the race, you will have to wear the face coverings as well. And for those of you who will be participating in the Blue Line Lounge, face coverings will be uh, up there as well. As you see on the screen, we have like the checklist, you know, take a moment. This is in the app as well. If you haven't already, please go to the app store, whether at the Android or, or, or Apple store to download the app. All the information is on there. Take note of what's there when the face coverings are needed, when your vaccine card or passes are going to be re uh, required for you. Again, this is all in an effort to keep us all safe. We want to make sure that, you know, we get to our start line, have a great race. Uh, so take note of that runners um, for which are need their own race day. Excellent. So there we go. We avoid the race before the race. Um, also, when you get to the, the, ex, the sorry, Fort Watchworth, the Athletes Village, uh, there'll be people like this that have, um, have a question. Um, if there are any questions that you have, last minute questions, might not be strategic questions, but just about when do I rate, when does my start, uh, about, I, I can't even think of what sort of questions you would have, but we'll have people there answering those questions for you. So again, avoid the race before the race, don't go out too, fa uh, too fast, and nothing new on races. So Absolutely. now we're about to get to the start. So, oops, let me go back here. here we're we about go. to get to the start. So. This is what the, uh, the start line looks like at the bridge. So before I play this video, <laughs> this is what Coach Ben was talking about. There's going to be about 30, 35,000 runners this year. When you say don't go out too fast and you see you know, these sort of <laughs> images, tell us how could we avoid going out too fast and, and what could we do, especially because earlier today we had somebody ask a question about if I try to go slow, but there's people behind me, as you can see here, and they're pushing me. So maybe kind of walk us through that, because yeah, it's a lot of excitement. It, it, it definitely is, and it's easy to get pulled along, as one would say, because you're going to be in this huge mass crowd, and you're going to be excited, and you're going to want to keep up with the person in front, in front of you, or maybe the person behind you so close, you're trying to get them off your shoulder. So when you have that mass group, it's easy to kind of get caught up in the moment and get pushed out and get caught in the wave and get caught in that nice swarm of people going out. Roberto, one of his key tips that he likes to do, I think is fantastic, whether you're upper level, orange and blue, lower level on, on the green, make, make yourself to one of the edges of the bridge, right or left, depending on where you prefer to be. That way runners can only pass you on one shoulder, not both. And that way then you can find your groove, your space. You know, find your lane, stay in your lane, find your, the moment that you want to be in because it is so true. You get up there, you find yourself being pushed along, pulled along. It's just sheer excitement. I mean, it's not, not, it's not difficult to get, find yourself running and be like, yeah, here we go. Because, again, maybe your first marathon ever, your first New York City marathon, or just straight happy to be back out there. One of the great things that we do have out there is we, will, is we do have our pace teams. Roberto, talk us through what the runners can expect Thanks. with our, oh, our pace team. <laughs> Yeah, so a shout out to our colleague Steve for managing our pace team. Let's see how well you can see it here. Uh, oh, catching the light. So uh, our pace team will be out there in various corrals, and if you're stopping by the expo, you could also get a chance to meet them. So they'll have on one side 9.33 per mile, uh, and then on the other side, so something like this, 4.15. So this, if I was a 4.15 or 4-hour, 15-minute pacer, I would have this in my corral. You would be able to see it. I'll also be wearing a corresponding jersey that stands out. And you know that I'm going to be trying to run 943 per mile. And the reason I say trying to is because, as Coach Ben just said, that first mile of Arizona and Arrows Bridge is a steep climb. So what you'll try to, what our pacers will do there is actually run 943 
effort. So they're not going to try to hit 943 for that first mile because if they are, they're actually trying to, they're running a lot faster. So that first mile for this 943 might look closer to 10 minutes for that first mile. Panic not because that same effort on the backside, aka the second mile of the Verrazano Bridge, you'll more than make up for that. And also, as we tell a lot of people, maybe even the elites actually, you can't win the race in the first mile, but you could certainly lose it. So if you don't pace yourself well, it's a 26.2 mile race. It's not a one mile race. It's not a two mile race or even a 5K, which sometimes the way people go out, they, you know, they tend to think that. So, um, so yeah, be on the lookout. They'll have pacers all the way from, I believe, three hours all the way to six hours. So, um, and they're going to be running even pace and even effort. So when it's an uphill effort, when it's a flat or downhill, which fortunately the course has a lot of, will be pace. So the first two miles, I would say, don't worry too much about your pace. Focus on your effort and focus on not going out too fast. Yeah, if you, if you, PK, if you PB your, your the 5K of the first 5K of this race, well, congratulations on your PR and congratulations on a really tough next 35K or 37K. Unless it's K. your first official 5K <laughs> ever, there's like a caveat, but most likely exactly. do not set any personal best yeah. unless it's the 26.2 miles. So yeah, yeah well, we'll show you here is, is the video. Um, really love to see this. So this is uh, what the start bridge looks like. Ah, uh, look at that. Look at that. So this video goes through the bridge a lot yeah. quicker than you'll be <laughs> running it, but it kind of gives you an idea. And the cool thing, too, is that on a clear day, which we're expected to have yeah. on, on Monday, oh, sorry, uh, on Monday as well, but <laughs> on Sunday, um, you can look to your left and you get these amazing views of the New York City skyline, which is, you know, where we're trying to run towards. So, okay, we've covered the first two miles. We're not going out too fast. We're following our pacers if they are in our corral. Um, now we're going to get into Brooklyn. So, Ben, tell us about Brooklyn. Welcome to the Isle of Brooklandia, mile three to seven. This is a pretty straightforward area of the race. This is where you kind of just settling in. This is where you want to put that race plan into action. You've been working hard. You have an idea of what you want to do, how often you want to drink, how often you want to eat. You know, maybe, maybe by now you've shed a layer of clothing or two uh, or pulled the arm warmers down because the body's feeling pretty good. This should really be a straightforward easy part of your run. Fourth Avenue should just, just be finding your legs and just kind of getting yourself, your body, you know, getting everything worked out because uh, miles three through eight, you'll just be cruising through uh, Brooklyn. A lot of excitement. Uh, the courses will come together uh, right around the 5K, around uh, a mile four. So you'll be, you know, you'll be seeing some more runners uh, come in with you at a certain point. I just think they repay Fourth Avenue in Brooklyn as well. So wow, I look welcome. forward to seeing that. So congrats. Welcome to fresh pavement, a fresh runway for you to find your pace, find your effort, not make uh, your 10K PR in this section of the race. So again, settle in, uh, runners. If you're with the pace team, this is where the pace team really comes into play. All you're doing is following along, sit behind them. Um, and then again, as you approach mile eight, a uh, great part of the course, Roberto, take us through what happens here at mile eight. Yeah, so mile eight, three courses become one. So when you pick up your bib at the expo, uh, you'll see that you'll either are orange, blue, or green. So that corresponds to where you start on the course, uh, where you start on the bridge. And if you're starting green, you're on the lower part of the bridge, which means that you are coming off the bridge in a different way than uh, orange and blue are. And that just means that you're going to run a slightly different path for a first seven or so miles, but at mile eight, all the courses come into one. So again, regardless of which corral, which wave you're in, everybody's running 26.2 miles. Oftentimes people think it's more advantageous to be here versus there. Maybe they've heard stories, but the truth is we measure the course. It's 26.2 <laughs> miles start to finish. So at mile eight, around the Brooklyn Academy of Art, all three courses become come together in one. And I think it's really cool because that's the first time that I... Year in, year out, I forget about this fact, and then I, I look over to my right, and I was like, oh, wow, that's right. And there's just a mass of people coming, but, you know, at mile eight, the course is kind of thinned out a little bit, so there's not as much uh, congestion as you might have felt at the early start of the race. But, again, this year we have about 30,000, 35,000 runners expected to finish, which is uh, maybe 20 or so less than typical years. So if you've run the marathon, our marathon before, it might actually feel – like you have a little bit more space, but we also have aid stations. We really haven't touched yeah. upon it. You can kind of see it here, Ben. Take us. Yeah, very, very important. The aid stations you see here on the image below, those lovely people in green, they stand out very well. Along the course, uh, usually every mile, but uh, the history we've had, had to make a slight modification. So miles five, seven, and nine, there will not be water or get or Gatorade on course, but there will at every other mile from three to 25. So as you make your way through the course, uh, you'll see the aid stations uh, on the course. Again, those lovely green 
um, it's almost like a poncho that they're wearing out there. You will see them well in advance. If you're running with the pace team, the pace team will point them out. They'll use their great pace sign to say, uh, water stations will be up on your right and left. Again, right and left, they're on both sides of the street. Gatorade will be first, water will be second. Uh, we had a question earlier about someone asking, you know, will the pacers walk through the eight stations? Uh, most will not. Maybe some pacers will, but usually they do not. They will go through. They'll probably get water and Gatorade themselves. Um, so do what you have to do for yourself and your race. Uh, feel free to stop if it's easier to get in the water or the fuel that you need. Uh, don't worry, you'll find yourself catching back up to the, uh, you know, to the, the pace group within a mile or so. Um, yeah, but keep out there every, every mile besides five, seven, and nine. And then again, another thing, mile 12 and mile 18, uh, our Honey Stinger uh, you know, reps will be out there as well with, their, with, with the gel. So if you've been practicing, again, going back to nothing new on race day, if you've been training with the uh, Honey Stinger gels, they will be out there at mile 12 and 18. So we've gone through the Brooklyn Academy of Music, Roberto. What's up next for our runners? What's up next is the literal halfway point, but also, you know, just not the metaphorical halfway point, just that 13.1 miles. So here we are crossing the Pulaski Bridge. We're going through all five boroughs. So we've started in Staten Island. We've just run through Brooklyn, which, by the way, that's where you actually should settle into your ideal goal pace. If you have one, if you're running just for fun, not worry about time, then no worries. You can still listen to this because you'll get a lot of great tips. But if you're looking to get a certain performance, I would say miles one and two on the bridge, throw away miles, and then the rest of those miles in Brooklyn settle in. But once you get into the Pulaski Bridge, where we're going into our third borough of the day, Queens, um, as you can see, it's a, it looks like a relatively steep hill. It's not that steep, but again, halfway point of the marathon in New York, you're actually running, hopefully conservatively, hopefully keeping an eye on running the same pace long before the halfway point. So if you're getting to 13.1 miles holding on, that's not the goal, you know, that's not great. So our pacers are gonna be, you know, so this, this pacer here would be coming through in around 207, 208, knowing that, you know, they're right on pace and not trying to go out and run, maybe coming through in two hours and then doing 215 the second half. Like, yeah, you did run 415, but you didn't run it evenly, efficiently. So when you get to the Pulaski Bridge, just make sure that you take stock. How, are you, how am I feeling? Do I need to slow down? Because even though it's a halfway point, it's still not too late to, you know, marshal in, slow down if, if you think you've gone out too fast. But you want to, this is kind of a critical point where you want to make sure that you've, you have reserves that you could feel like you could hold that pace because unfortunately, the marathon is super, super easy until it's not. And when it's not, it doesn't give you like a, a heads up, like RSVP. It's just like, hi, last mile, I felt really good. And now this mile, I'm done. And I've experienced it. I know Coach oh. Ben has. If you've run several marathons or even done several long runs, you, you experience this. So uh, what else can you tell us about uh, the halfway point, Coach Ben? 2015 at that bridge right there was a rough point for me. That was my like, hello, the, 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 the piano that I hoped I was going to shed became uh, you know, a full grand piano, and I dragged that sucker the rest of the marathon. It's a so long way to go. It's a long way with a piano strapped to your back. But yeah, this is the halfway point. You know, this is a great picture right here because, again, you're at the, you know, the, you know, the halfway point in terms of a distance of the race. This, this the picture is great because over to your left hand side you'll see Manhattan, but you're not quite there yet. You know you're going to be coming across that. You're heading over into Long Island City and Queens, and this guy's face here at the bottom of the screen. This is how you want to feel. You want to be feeling really good. You want to feel relaxed. You want to be enjoying yourself, smiling still. Uh, the guy in the front there, he's probably you know he's texting somebody up up ahead saying it's amazing. That, <laughs> he's probably texting him like yo, find me an Uber somewhere in Long Island City because this is not my day. Yeah. Uh, but again, you want to be relaxed. Yeah, the fact that he can do that, it's called voice text. It's a pretty cool thing. You should maybe try that for next year. If you're breathing too hard, it might be difficult. <laughs> but, could, yeah. could, but you shouldn't be breathing difficult at this point. It should still feel like a long run. Really, you should be. By the time you get into mile 13, it should still feel like a long run. You're just settling in. The fuel plan is in full swing. You're following the pacer out there if you have one and you're just enjoying yourself. But yeah, you want to just be hanging out, enjoying it, because you know, you've gone through two boroughs. Your third borough is on the way. Yeah, exactly. So... Now we've gone through, you know, Long Island City. And uh, before we continue, we're actually going to get to some shout outs now. What do we got? Bring it on there. Okay, go ahead. Read it. Uh, Janera, watching from the best borough, the Bronx. Hello, Janera. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I thought you technically <laughs> live in the Bronx or Manhattan. I live in Manhattan. I got a big heart for the Bronx. Okay. Well, we got Tanya saying hello from Harlem. A lot of local flavor so far this morning. Definitely. Diana, hi from the Upper West Side. There you go. Manhattan love. There you go. Yeah, back in my day. <laughs> Hello. Okay, we got Patsy from Dallas, Texas. Jessica, can't wait. First, 
New York City Marathon. That's the best. Jessica, we look forward to receiving you, and you are paying extra attention. As I said to somebody else earlier today, you better be taking notes. So. Yeah. Uh, we got Rosemary from uh, Texarkana, Arkansas. Yeah. Nice. Aaron, watching from Long Island. Thank you so much, Aaron. Kimmy, hello from Connecticut. Hello, Kimmy. Sarah, for first marathon, taking extra notes today, and yeah, you're going to yeah. have a blast. Enjoy, enjoy. All right, another Connecticutian, Connecticut. <laughs> uh, I don't know what they're called yet, but Mary from New Haven, Connecticut. John, second NYC. Well, hopefully your second is as enjoyable as your first, and hopefully your first was enjoyable. Yeah, I wonder when your first was. Let <laughs> yeah. us know. All right, we got Kyle, New York, New York. It's my first. All right, a lot of first-time yeah, marathoners. Exciting. Good. Christina, another Upper West Sider, first marathon. There you go. Go get it. Have a good day. I personally say Upper West Side is the best, so anyway. <laughs> uh, Alyssa from Los Angeles. Hey, yeah. Hey, a little West Coast love. There you go. Christine, last time running New York City. Wow, the last, I'm wonder, curious, why the last time? Maybe, maybe, I mean, I, we all know I feel the same way about marathons. It's my last one ever. You know, every time you finish that, <laughs> you finish a marathon, you're like, yeah, not doing this again. Then a few weeks pass and you get the itch. So, Christine, <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll Great. see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Uh, Frank, 66 years young, Thank you. Charleston, South Carolina, first marathon. Welcome, Frank. First marathon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love it. Chelsea, first running with Autism Speaks, fantastic charity. Chelsea, thank you so much. Hope you're getting a lot of love out there. Welcome, first marathon. And another Long Islander. That, that is one, Long Islander. Uh, All right, Diane from Long Island. Chang, Billy. Hi, everyone. Hi to you. Hope you're having a good day, Billy. We got Rob, first marathon from Chicago via Long Island. Okay. All right, so we're going to get to some questions and continue to send us your shout-outs and questions. So the first one, I guess I'll ask you, Coach Ben. Julia, can spectators come to the Expo? Yeah, this is a question we've been getting quite a bit. Um, obviously, runners who will be attending the Expo that can go inside the experience presented by New Balance, uh, runners will be allowed to go inside with a plus one only. Uh, so if you have more than one plus one, uh, pick the one you like the best, you love the best. Rock, paper, scissors, whatever you got to do. It's a tough decision, but someone's got to make it. And unfortunately, it falls on your shoulders. Uh, the expo will not, unfortunately, be open to the general, uh, the general uh, public to come in. So unfortunately, for this year, uh, for runners who do want to maybe look for New Balance gear, they can go to the Run Center, the New Balance Run Hub at 320 West 57th Street uh, during the week, or they can go to the Pavilion uh, on Marathon Monday to get their finisher's gear. So keep that in mind. If you can't bring that plus two along, there are other options for them to check out for gear. Thank you, Coach Ben. Next question, Carla. I will get my results from a recent COVID test tonight. Can I use that at the expo or do I have to take the test again today? I believe that your, your test has to be within 48 hours. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to be dropping some extra links in the chat for information. But yeah, uh, it has to be within 48 hours. So obviously today is the first day, Thursday, and you have technically till uh, Saturday uh, as far as the expo goes. Yeah. So yeah. keep information out there, but great question. All right, uh, Billy, I'm in wave five and start at noon. I'm going to, be, it's going to be dark by, at, dark at 4.45 p.m. Should I run fast to finish before dark? This, this is almost a combination of the previous question. Right? And people are really on top of when, uh, when it's getting dark. Exactly. Everyone knows that we I, are I wasn't back. aware of it. I mean, I know that there's daylight savings on Sunday morning, so be aware right. of that. But, back, uh, yeah. okay, so you can answer that question. It seems like a, yeah. a layup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The answer is no. Enjoy it. I mean, don't worry about when the sun's going down. Actually, enjoy the sunset. It's going to be a beautiful day. Don't worry about when you're finishing. You'll have plenty of course support out there. The course is open well into the six, six and a half hour range. So don't worry about, you know, you know, tables not being out there for you or spectators. New York loves a marathon. It's going to be a fantastic day. You know, plus the great thing is I know when you come in, there's floodlights, you know, when you come into the park, and I know they always have some cool light shows at the finish line. So coming in late has its perks because you're going to see a fantastic finish line with a, kind of a rock and roll kind of feel to it. So don't worry about it, Billy. You'll have a good time. Don't run. Don't go out too fast. Don't waste yeah. energy when you're in Brooklyn. Just sit back, enjoy, chill out. You know, let the day come to you. You've worked your tail off to get there. Yeah, one thing I'll quickly say to that, too, is that, you know, you as an individual, we all are a collection of individuals, but you'll be amazed how many people are out there running around your pace. Uh, some people will be actually coming back because they went out too fast. Some people will be around you from start to finish. So, um, yeah, I, I highly doubt I'd be surprised if you're actually literally out there by yourself. There'll be loads of other runners, volunteers, spectators, and then we'll be out there at the finish line, as we typically are. Absolutely. Okay, so... 
Uh, thank you. Continue to send your questions, uh, shout outs, and, and any, any other questions you might have. But we're going to toss it back to uh, Core Strategy. Core Strategy. So we've gone into, let me see, we've done Staten Island, yeah. gone through Brooklyn, yeah. gone to Pulaski, we're in Queens, and we're in a very, some would say, a tougher, challenging part of the course. It's not the best part of the course. It is tough. I mean, again, it's a marathon. It's, it wasn't meant to be easy, but welcome to Long Island City. Welcome to the Queensboro Bridge. Queensboro Bridge. You talk about it, I'll play the video. Yeah, I'll talk about it. I'll talk about how much fun this bridge is, <laughs> how, how enjoyable it is. It is one of the unique experiences in a lot of ways when you're going across the Queensboro Bridge. Because again, the bridges in on this race are usually spectator free. The Queensboro is 100% going to be spectator free. There is nobody on the bridge but the runners. So what will you hear? Lots of pitter patter of feet, lots of heavy breathing. Uh, it is about a mile, in, a mile or so up uh, from Long Island City up until the, the, the apex or the peak of the bridge, and then you have a nice downhill from there. You are on the underside of the bridge, so that it will be a little bit darker, especially if you're on the interior side as opposed to the, um, the outside closer to where the views are. Um, so, but this is a great time just to kind of take it, take it, you know, just control. Take it back. It is a little dark. It's also a chance to check in with yourself. When you come off the bridge, you'll have about 10 miles to, uh, to, to go. Still a long way to get into the bridge. So just take a moment, take it in, relax when you're going up. Again, we talked earlier about effort. Keep the effort level controlled. If your pace drops off 30 seconds on that uphill, it's fine. Trust me, you're going to make it up on the backside. The pace team, if you're running with a pacer out there, they will do the work. Just grab a shoulder. Even if you drop back a little bit. Not you literally. Be... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just... and, and you don't have to be right there with the pacer. If you come back a little bit, you know, just, you know, you know a runner or two or even five runners, it's okay. You're going to be fine. Yeah, this is a, a challenging part of the course. No reason to do more work here than you have to. Settle in because as you come down the other side, what are you going to hear, Coach Roberto? <laughs> just a uh, crowd going wild. Yeah, just our producer is losing it. Welcome to my version of the course strategy. It's interactive. Uh, everyone in the room gets involved. But yeah, as Coach Ben said, you know, and I will say this is actually one of my favorite parts of the course just because they have that solitude, that moment of just you and the runners. And I absolutely love this. But it's also a challenging hill. So um, this pacer right here, 415 pace uh, or 943 per mile. 415 Th pace? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this pacer is setting the world record in the mile. It is not me. Um, yeah, th this, this pacer right here, they're going to be going up that hill at slower than 943 per mile. But they're going to be coming back down with the same effort. We're going a lot faster because, as Coach Ben just said, you come on. And you said it earlier, I, I haven't measured it, but 270 degree turn. <laughs> it's an off ramp off the Queensboro Bridge onto First Avenue. And the crowd there is just, is definitely deafening. Yeah. Um, it charges you up, but it could really also speed you up. So harness that energy of the crowd, but also, and, and just ease into that downhill. Let it take you, but don't start changing gears because you're going to make more than make up for the pace that you might have slipped a little bit. And our pacers are going to also do the same thing. So if you're with the pacer, follow their lead. If you're by yourself, just know that you can let gravity take you, open up your stride a little bit, lean forward, but don't work harder to go faster to try to make up because you're actually working harder than, than you need to be and eventually fans out. And the other thing too is that you can't tell maybe too well here, but there is a gradual climb um, on First Avenue. And as Ben talks about that, I'm going to try to get to this other part of the map where you can kind of see it a little bit because it's deceptive, but these are the miles that we're talking about. So it doesn't look that hilly, but be between the combination of how far along you are in the race, as Coach Ben said, you're about 10 miles in, and the fact that it's a gradual climb, um, you will feel that. But First Avenue is great. We have, um, we have the eight stations there, so you can kind of shout those out again. Yeah, definitely keep looking for the eight stations. Uh... Honey Singer will be at mile 18, so again, if you want to grab that last little you know, bit, if you've been training with that, even if you have been training with it, just to have something in reserve late in the race, if you dare go that direction, maybe grab a gel or two just to have in reserve in case you need one. Uh, but yeah, I mean, when you come off the, uh, the uh, Queensboro Bridge, that excitement that's going to be there, probably the, one of the few times in your life where you will not need more cowbell, because there's <laughs> going to be uh, so much cowbell going on. It's also not difficult to find yourself all of a sudden probably sub marathon pace marathon effort why because it is a lot of energy coming off that bridge coming in there and that hill after a while and at the crowd will thin as you make your way north on first avenue that's okay you know again you're not going to be by, you're not going to be by yourself you're not going to be alone there'll always be somebody with you out out there you have all the first avenue it's a very wide boulevard to go through uh, you'll be able to find shade if you're a prefer the shade runner but the weather looks fantastic uh, but then before you know it, you'll be coming off of uh, First Avenue and into your fourth 
Burrow and the, the best Burrow. Really. Yeah, yeah, we're not playing. <laughs> we're not playing favorites. Are they Burrow favorites today? You know, speaking of Burrows <laughs> and bridges, so here you have the Willis Avenue Bridge, and I'll draw this a little here. I feel a little bit like Bob Ross. What we're gonna do here? We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna take a, a touch of a hill, but so. Myself and Coach Ben just ran this. Uh, we ran the last eight miles yeah. of the course uh, on Sunday, so a few days ago. And when you're running the course fresh, part of it, this hill and, and other subsequent ones to come don't feel like anything. But this is the Willis Avenue, uh, Willis Avenue Bridge coming into the Bronx, so coming into the 20th mile. And this bridge is actually deceptively hard. It's short, it's steep, but once again, what you want to do here is really just focus on your pace. Uh, sorry, focus on your effort and not worry too much about your pace. You're going to be tired. You're 20 miles in or just about 20 miles in. Um, you're going to be looking around. You're going to see a lot of people just kind of struggling. And some people might be coming back to you that started out too fast you didn't see earlier. So what you want to do is really stay positive, um, focus on effort up this hill, and, you know, try to look like, like this guy, which is, <laughs> You know, how Coach Ben I, looks every time he's in the Bronx. <laughs> I've never looked. In the Bronx, I'm not running yet. Yeah, yeah. On race day, I've never looked that fresh, that excited. Yeah, channel this energy right here. Channel him. Be him. This is who you want to be. They always say the race is transformative. Maybe you will become this gentleman here on the screen because, yes, he will definitely want to channel them. Because, yeah, mile 20, this is really the, the halfway point of the marathon, as one would say. It's really a 20-mile long run. You have a 10-mile race after this. If you have the legs to do 10K it. 10K race. 10 mile, I, mean, I am just all messed yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're turning every, race early. Yeah, <laughs> Coach Ben is turning runner. the marathon into an ultra, and that's not what we're trying to do. It's not bad water, is that yeah. what you're saying? Okay. Uh, at least you're bringing it down. Earlier you were 90 <laughs> miles, now you're 30 miles, so by the yeah. next course strategy, it'll be, it'll be a, a marathon. It'll be yeah. a 5K before we're all done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely you have a 10K left after you come into the Bronx. So take it easy, take it in, because, yeah, it is. you're working hard through here, but uh, after you exit, the, the Bronx is very short, very sweet. Uh, you know, there will be a ton of cheer zones through there, a lot of good music because it is the Bronx, but then you will make your way across the Madison Avenue Bridge back into Manhattan uh, for your final push home. Uh, one of the kind of the quirks about the course that we do have is you will be coming down Fifth Avenue after you cross over the Mass Avenue Bridge. You will come to a park. Your first park you come to is not Central Park. It is the lovely Marcus Garvey Park. It is right around mile 22 and change or so. It's a couple of right-hand turns, a couple of left-hand turns as you make your way around the park on Fifth Avenue. It's hard to be deceptive. You see a park, you think it's Central Park. Don't be lulled into that. It is Marcus Garvey Park. It's still a fantastic park in the borough of Manhattan. And then before you know it, you're back on Fifth Avenue and approaching uh, arguably the more challenging part of our course, Roberto. What do you got for us here as you get back in there? Uh, well, so... I have my favorite parts of the course, <laughs> and I have my least favorite parts. As each year we coach runners, and, and I get to pace runners, I always say, yes, the mile 20 is a physiological halfway point. So you get to mile 20. If you're feeling good, dynamite. If you're not, it's okay. You know, just take, take, take it in. Just slow down. You know, work on effort. Just think of different mantras of, of your why. But when you get over here to Fifth Avenue, this is, this is where, for me, the race either is made or, or broken yeah. like whether you're looking to win like our elites or whether you're running looking to set a personal best because if you could crest up this about mile long hill up fifth avenue from around 110 uh the northern part of central park to about 90th uh street where you turn into the park with about two or so miles to go if you could crest this hill and feel like you've survived it then for me the rest of the marathon you know two miles ago there's still a lot of things that could happen but it's such a short distance that this is the last proper hill. So it's all downhill from here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> do you, you I, dare say that? Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> I dare. You know, I, I even have myself in my own head, in my own ear, each year when I'm when I'm doing course strategy, and then a few days later when I'm running the course, I'm like Fifth Avenue. And you know, once again, if you've run the course before um, for training, or if you've raced it, you know, we, again, we just ran it on Sunday yeah. together, and. It was a significant climb, but like we didn't really feel it because again we're like four miles or six miles into the course versus. I was feeling it. Oh well, yeah, I guess yeah. He was. He cut through the course. I just remember. I wasn't gonna throw him under the bus, but yeah, I you continued. He cut through the course, but uh, modified. Yeah, yeah, modified. He, uh, modified. <laughs> so what you want to do here is just really just focus on your effort, lean forward, and and know that you ideally want to still have a little bit reserved in the tank because if you're going up this hill, absolutely flat out, like this is all I have to give then the last couple of miles are still going to be a little bit challenging because we do enter the park, which uh, Coach Ben will talk about, and there is a significant amount of downhill. But at that point, if your legs are trash, if you're feeling um, lack, like if you're lacking energy, glycogen depletion, aka hitting the wall, 
then downhills don't matter. And I've been there before where a downhill doesn't matter, um, a flat doesn't matter, everything feels the same. So you want to try to make it up to Fifth Avenue uh, to the top of that feeling good. So for those of you who have not run New York before, respect the halfway point, 13.1 miles. Look at your physiological halfway point, mile 20, but really focus on getting to Fifth Avenue, feeling as good as you can. Because if you do that, the rest of the race, you could really make up time. As um, uh, Connor Shelley was saying earlier yeah. that his sister made up so much time in those last two miles because she paced herself well that she was actually able to uh, BQ. Yeah, and it's so true because you come in, you know, you have 2.2 left and you come back into the park and everyone else here is, you know, all the hills of Central Park. In reality, the hills of Central Park that you'll be running are mostly downhill. Uh, you'll make your way around behind uh, the Metropolitan M Museum of Art, um, past the obelisk, and then you go down uh, what native New Yorkers or locals will call Cat Hill. It's a very nice downhill. It's about a quarter mile, about 400 meters downhill. And if you have the legs, if your quads are not totally trashed by this point, uh, you don't just prefer to roll down it because it could be faster at this point than running down it. <laughs> not safer, but yeah. <laughs> not safer. But yeah, if you, can, if you get yourself to run down that hill, it feels good-ish to go down that, but you will be able to make your way down. There'll be a small uh, uh, kicker hill after you cross the 72nd Street. Um, transverse, it's a, not a great place to have it. Then you'll make your way around, and then you go down behind the Central Park Zoo at mile 25. There's a great photo bridge at mile 25. Make sure you throw up your hands, get a good picture there if you can even raise your hands at this point, and then you will make a sweeping kind of right-hand turn onto Central Park South, and this is your view that you will see on Central Park South as you make your way towards uh, Columbus uh, Circle and your final right, and then on the marathon on ramp, and then left uphill to finish the race. This view here, I've seen it five times. Once it felt good, the other four times it was like, okay, I made it, thank goodness, because man, you're just, you're really, it's mile 25 of, of a marathon. I, I, you know, no matter how well your day is going, it's going to be uncomfortable, it's gonna struggle. But this is the view you have, the crowd support on the sides. In my, in my you know, personal experience, has always been great. Um, but what else are they looking forward to as they come in here, Roberto? Yeah, the cool thing about this part is that as you creep up closer, yeah, it is a gradual incline and you can't really tell too well maybe on the, on the video there, but like it's a gradual incline. But at this point, you're kind of just emptying your bag, you know, you're, you're emptying the gas tank. So you're just starting to be pulled towards that finish line. So basically this last mile, mile and a half of the course, course strategy plays a part in it. But at, at this point, as you know, kind of Shalane said uh, a few days ago, first half of the race running with your legs, second half with your heart. I would push to say maybe the last 5K with your heart because, you know, you're being pulled towards the finish. You're passing other people here who might have gone too fast. But people are also, the great thing about New York and, and marathoning in general is that you pass some people and you'll feel the urge to encourage them because you know they've been through the same journey that you have for 23 miles, 24, 25 miles. So people passing you encourage you. You passing people, you encourage them. You have the crowds to your left, to your right. Well, I did that backwards. To your right, to your left. <laughs> and they, they, you know, they're, they're encouraging and like, Overhead, you could kind of start to hear the over the PA, like people being announced <laughs> that they're finishing. So you know you're really close. So at this point, you're just getting yourself pulled into the finish line. And you know, if it if it goes really really well, then you could you could look like this. I'm not saying you're gonna win it, but <laughs> the you can. Everybody's got their own finish yeah. line. So you know, these are our 2019 winners. Uh, uh, one cool thing that you see there, they're crossing the finish line. Obviously, they're winning, but one thing they're not doing, they're not looking down, they're not stopping their watch. I'm sure they have their GPS devices. Maybe they're all on Strava. You could give them a follow later, but they're not concerned about what is their finishing time. They're not concerned about we got getting, you. yeah, we have professional timing. <laughs> Believe it or not. What? Yeah, we have professional time timing. <laughs> Your friends and family can also track you on the app, so make sure that they download the TCS New York City Marathon app. But when you cross that finish line, you know, throw your hands up in there, celebrate because it has been a great day. And then what comes next, Coach Ben? Yeah, what comes next is mile, 20, uh, mile 27. This is after the race is done. You're going to be coming through with your head held high, your arms up high, yep. not your head down. You do not want the finish line photo to be at the top of your head, especially not mine with the loss of hair I have these years because it is not a pretty picture. My I'm son, making up for it. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, my son reminds me all the time. Don't worry. But yeah, you want to come across the finish line. You have hit mile 27. Uh, remember, at, in the start, uh, village before the race and before the race starts, you will have your face uh, covering on. If you have kept your face covering for those 26.2 miles, well, congratulations, applaud to you. Uh, put it back on after you cross the uh, finish line. If you have somehow lost it, gotten rid of it at some point, it's fine, don't worry, because in the recovery bag that you will be getting from hospital for special surgery, there will be a face mask in there, as well as your finisher me uh, medal. So do not worry about, you know, everything is in there. You know, Coach Roberto and I were talking you know, at the earlier course strategy today that usually in the past when you come across the finish line, a volunteer puts the medal 
over you. Maybe you know that person. Even if you don't, it is an emotional moment. Again, history due to safety concerns. We're trying to limit the touch points. Your metal will be inside your recovery bag from hospital for special surgery. Don't worry, it's in there. You can put it on as you walk through. This gentleman here, the smiles, the aloha, he is, he is stoked, he's feeling good. He has his post-race poncho, which everybody will be getting as well after you walk off. But definitely in that bag that you get is going to have honey singer bars or waffles. You'll have Gatorade, an apple, probably some um, uh, other fuel of some kind. At this point, you should be trying to get in something into your body. Recovery begins the second you cross the finish line like this, not like this. So start trying to get something into your body. It could be tough. Your stomach's probably not going to be 100%. But try to get something down there, either sucking on one of the, um, you know, you know, one of the uh, pretzels you have to dissolve slowly in your mouth. Drink a little bit of the water, the Poland Springs water you have, or the Gatorade you have. Just to sip on it if, as you can, because you are going to want to be able to recover as quickly as you can, because your body, it does need it. Yeah, and the other thing we'll say, and we don't have a, fortunately we don't have a, a photo of it, is avoid sitting down. We understand you've just <laughs> run your heart out 26.2 <laughs> miles. You're tired, I'm tired, he's tired, but he's tired. But, you know, year in and year out, we do see people sit down, and they think they're going to sit down for a second. And some of them do make it back up under their own care. But oftentimes, you know, from running so much and, and working so hard, your muscles are depleted, um, cramping could occur, uh, stiffening. So we've often seen people, you know, not able to get up. They, they kind of seize up a little bit. So you cross that finish line, it's okay for a second, put the hands on the knees. You know, breathe a little bit, but then try to continue to move. Try to continue to walk. You don't have to become a power walker or, or you know, continue jogging, but just continue to move, continue to have that, that blood flow going. And then most of us, you know, we're running the race literally by ourselves, but we're not, we haven't come to this course by ourselves. We haven't trained by ourselves. We have the support of our friends and family, whether they're following us on the app or they're actually right there on the Blue Line Lounge, you know, wherever they are. So... Make sure that you have a plan set to where you're going to meet your friends and loved ones after the race because this year we have about 30,000, 35,000 finishers expected, but we have even more than that as far as crowd support, family, friends, members around. So oftentimes we have cell phone saturation. Um, some people run with their phone and using it as a GPS device, so maybe your battery dies. So your friends and family, the good thing is they will be tracking you or they can track you if they download the app. They put in your name, your bib number, et cetera. So what you want to make sure that they do is they follow you along and they'll say uh, Coach Ben or Ben Delaney uh, has just finished the race in three and a half hours. Um, he's expected to exit the park at this time. And then at least then you will understand like, okay, we would made a plan to meet somewhere on the Upper West Side or et cetera, et cetera. Upper West Side again, huh? Yeah, well, we're not, we're not meeting in the Bronx. That is a long, that, that's beyond the 27th mile. We're trying to meet right away. Yeah, yeah. So Coach Ben is meeting his loved ones. Shout out to Joey. He's meeting her on the Upper West Side. This is my narrative. I'm sticking to it. Um, so yeah, just make sure that you have plans on where to meet your friends and family um, and make sure, again, that they are tracking you. And then, you know, this is what you should ideally look like. You want to feel like that in the post-race finish, not like, oh, where's my friends and family? Why is my cell phone not working? Why is my battery dead? Because, again, as Roberto said, the saturation is going to be so intense. But, yeah, you want to have that uh, finish line feeling you have. And here is a map. You know, all that blue zone, that is the frozen zone. That is the area for the runners will be allowed only in that area as the post-race um, the, uh, the walk-off area you'll see as you come out around 72nd Street. Uh, that's where the runners will be getting their post-race ponchos. Any runner who has done the pre-race bag check, your bags will be in this area as well. And you'll be heading uh, south on Central Park West to exit around 63rd, 64th Street. And just keep on moving south. Find your loved ones, whether it be over on Broadway, on Columbus. Maybe you're going over to 9th Avenue. Maybe you're falling down. Maybe you're going straight to uh, the uh, subway. Hopefully, one of the lovely patrons here in New York sees your poncho and uh, cedes their seat to you, or maybe you just choose to stand up because if you sit down, you may be on the subway until Tuesday because you never get up again because you're stepping it's up. It's a great way to see New York. <laughs> <laughs> From underground or overground, yeah. wherever you may be going. But yeah, you have done it, and, and I mean, I'm telling you, Anyone who has finished a marathon, you know, if you finish the TCS New York City Marathon, uh, it is um, something to, um, you know, take in, enjoy. It's, you know, it's uncomfortable, but heck, you know, you have them pedal, you have all them hemorrhoids uh, to go along with that. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not running it. I know you are. Yeah. Um, you know, you'll be out there having a fun time. Uh, what are you looking forward to most out there? Uh, honestly, welcome to the city back has been, you know, we, we've joked about it. 2020 was 17 <laughs> years ago, but 2020 was a long year for many of us. Uh, and 2021 has also been <clears throat> a bit of a long year, but there's been light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, through group training where we were this morning with our, our local runners, through our virtual training, shout out to uh, coaching lab runners out there. And then just through 
these conversations that we've had throughout the year for various expos uh, or core strategies and things like that, it's just been great to interact with the runners, but seeing the runners in person, running the streets of New York, running all five boroughs, that's just going to be, it's always been a giant New York party, a celebration, but I think this year, it being the 50th and coming back after uh, essentially a two-year hiatus, yeah. um, that's what I'm looking forward to. So really, again, to enjoy that. So we're going to get over to some questions, but again, right off the top, nothing new on race day. Don't go out too fast. Avoid the race before the race. And let's hear the first question. Oh, shout out. Okay, shout out. We have uh, Rob, his first marathon, Chicago, call, calling in from uh, Long Island. <laughs> Chris, love both of your humor. You help, yeah, de-stress, yeah, smile, yeah. have fun out there. Again, you worked hard. I, I mean, I tell all of our runners, smile, just smile. Yeah, I mean, if you're not having fun, why do it, right? <laughs> exactly. if, you, if you're at home running this marathon under duress, blink once, <laughs> exactly. let me know. Exactly. We'll, we'll send help. I can't, I can't see you blink, exactly. but I'll feel you. <laughs> exactly. All right, we got Jackie. Hello from Long Island. Chris, Portland, Oregon, loving the West Coast, love. All have right. a safe flight if you're coming over. Franklin, first marathon from New Jersey. All right, we love our first-time marathoners because they are yes. really in for it. Just great experience. <laughs> in for it in a good way. Yeah. Mike, can't wait to run up Bedford Avenue. That is a fantastic part of the race. Fort Greene, Greenpoint, the, the road in Harrow's out. There's bands, there's churches are out. It's incredible. Yeah, and the thing about that, it always feels like the Tour de France. I've never cycled there, obviously, because I'm not a pro cyclist, but, like, <laughs> their crowds are right there. So uh, we got Chris. Hello from Virginia. Jaru representing Thailand. Hello, nice. Jaru. Love it. Hopefully thank you. Hopefully you're so coming in for the race. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right. Tiffany, on the plane from Utah to New York. Tiffany <laughs> watching us on that free Wi-Fi. Free Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody that's next to us watching Netflix, but we appreciate you're watching the true content right here. If it's not free, expense it. Well, don't. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Christian Bronx, first marathon in person. Maybe you did the virtual last year. Yeah. Uh, be a much different experience, but thank you for doing the virtual TCS last Coming year. Coming from the Bronx. It. Ben's the been Bronx. to the Bronx before. Just once or twice. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We got Colleen, second marathon from NJ, New Jersey yeah, in the house. Is, there you go. Natalia El Salvador, first after a pulmonary embolism. Wow. wow. Okay. Is, Shout out to you, Natalia. About, we'll yeah, see I'm you talk, on Sunday. Yeah, talk about in, 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 inspirational. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, we got Kenny all the way from <laughs> Jersey City. I think I see you, Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> we'll wave over yeah. to you that, Kenny. Tilly, from New York City, first ever 26.2. Well, maybe, right. hey, again, I mean, what, you picked a good one to do. You live here. Enjoy. Maybe some friends and family come out and give you some love. Indeed. Uh, we got Jonathan. Hello from New Jersey. Must be on lunch break over there in New yeah, Jersey. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Julia, hello from the One Train. So I guess wow. it's somewhere between you know 242 and South Ferry, maybe even in the aforementioned Upper West Side. I can't even send a text message on the train, <laughs> but Julia somehow is streaming us live. In the Bronx is the One Train. That's why. Uh, okay. Well, shout out to <laughs> Julia from the One Train that the One Train in New York that has Wi-Fi. <laughs> the One Train. <laughs> Melinda from Montgomery, Alabama. Thank you so much, Melinda, for joining. Uh, Delane from Monroe, Louisiana. All right, we got the Southern Look at love. That. Yeah. Look at that. Erica Astoria, first marathon. Welcome, Astoria. We have a lot of coaches, a lot of love from our runners out in Astoria. So thank you for coming over. Yeah. Uh, Elena and Andre, Rockaway Park, New York. All right, New York in the house. Jeff, Charlotte, North Carolina, first New York. Jeff, welcome. If you're not flying up, you have a safe flight. Hope to see you at the Expo. See you out there. Go get it. Yeah, I hope all you first-time marathoners are connecting in, in the chat here because there's a bunch of you. We got Chris from Columbia living in D.C. All right. Very good. Deb, your jackets look great. Mine's better than his. It's better uh, than mine. Deb, I appreciate the compliment about my jacket. Um, Ben's jacket looks good as well. It looks but thank good you, as Deb. Well. Thank you, Deb. All right. Well, we're going to get uh, continue sh sending in your shout outs and we're going to get to some questions. I'm sure there's there some runners go. out there with questions. So um, I'll read the first one. Uh, Christian, tips if any muscle cramps happen. Yeah, muscle cramps, there is. I mean, hopefully you don't have any cramps of any kind, but every, uh, uh, there'll be aid stations, uh, medical aid every mile from 3 to 25. So in the, you know, unlikeliness, you do have to step off course to get some medical aid uh, every mile. Three, 3 to 25, you'll step off. There'll be white tents. There'll be medical people there to help you out. Uh, they will have salt uh, tablets because typically with cramping, maybe you'll have some dehydration. Uh, so they'll try to get you dehydrated, get you sent back up again, get you back on course. Um, you know, stretching yourself out a little bit if you're in between the stations. But uh, cramps happen. Walk it off. Walk as much as you can. Uh, if you do need uh, medical aid, three to, three to twenty-five every mile. Look for them out there. They'll help you out as much as they can to get you back on course. Excellent. 
Uh, Luis Ma, how many pacers per corral? Um, off the top of my head, I don't know. We have about 66 pacers total. Um, so what I would say, if you're coming into the expo at JFK Javits Center, uh, we'll have the, the tablet there. You can see what pacers are, because not every corral has a pacer. One corral might have two pacers, another corral might have three, another might have one. So it's really just about the pacer distribution. Obviously, I'm holding the example here of a 415 uh, pacer but there's going to be pacers from three hours all the way to six hours. So most likely, unless your goal is obviously under three, um, you will find a pacer either along the course or in your corral. Yeah, also if you're coming to the um, expo, the pacers will be there. So you'll be able to talk directly with them as well as some NYRR uh, coaches to help you with any kind of strategy or last minute questions that you may have. Uh, and again, Roberto said there will be you know, signs there to look for where the pacers will be. They may be in a corral before or behind. It's okay. They'll find you. You'll find them and have a good race. Yeah. All right, Kelly, when do the pacers start? Are there pacers in each of the waves? I was put in a wave based on my best 10K, but my marathon pace is definitely slower. Yeah, the pacers do. The pacers start at the same time that everybody else will. They are dispersed within the corrals. Again, look for the pace sign. The pace singlets will be a blue and white striped hoop, uh, so they'll be going around like that. Uh, look, look for the pacers that are out there. Whether in the corrals, will have larger what we call a lollipop sign. So it's a huge sign with a pacer. You'll see them out there. Uh, they obviously don't carry that. You know, one pacer did. He increased his bicep strength that year. Kudos to him. Um, yeah, and again, if you are in a corral that maybe doesn't feel comfortable to where you are for this race, because it's based off of a 10K time or a time that maybe was a year or two ago, you are free to drop back corral. So if you're in corral B and you see the pacer that's more your speed or more your pace, your comfort back in corral E, yes, you can go ahead and step back, drop back. Uh, put yourself where you are. Again, don't go out too fast. Um, you, know, you may find yourself with that pacer and they may carry to mile 20. And you may feel like a million bucks. And all of a sudden you hit that final 10K and you've got the legs, you have the heart, you have the energy to go for it. And you may just take that last 10K and blow off the doors and have a great day. So again, do what's best for you. It's your race. You've trained for it. Uh, you've probably done your long runs, kind of know where you are. Um, you know, you know, put yourself in the best chance for success, whatever that may be. Yeah. And just uh, as an uh, extra heads up, I know we've mentioned before, but you can't you can move back in corrals, as Coach Ben said, but you can't move up. So um, that's just for everybody out there, whether you feel great or not. You can move back, stay where you are, but you can't move up. Yeah, definitely. All right, next question. Uh, Jonathan, is there a warm place to stretch after the race? I know from the past that they usually rush runners away from the finish area. Yeah, and I think even more so than your, um, uh, Jonathan, they will be moving run, run, uh, runners along to move through the, the finishers area. They want to keep those touch points down. Uh, HSS will have an area if runners do need some sort of attention to stretch out. Uh, it will be contactless. They'll have areas where you can go in there. They'll have bands or other kinds of devices where you can stretch yourself out uh, if you are in need of that. But yes, they, we do want to keep you moving through the finisher corral through that mile uh, 27 to get the, um, the poncho. Again, there's 30 to 35,000 of you. Um, even in years where we don't have pandemics still looking at us in the face, we don't want you, uh, you know, to be hanging around in the area. We want you to get going, keep moving. Because, again, you want to keep that body moving. Like Roberto said, you, every ounce of your body will want to stop, want to sit down. But sitting down is easy. Getting up, uh, maybe not so easy. So keep yourself yeah. moving, um, even if tough as it feels, even if it's a shuffle. Uh, just keep yourself going full forward out there. Thank you. Uh, Melody, any tips for keeping your energy up from 6.30 until a start time at noon? Uh, a couple of shots of espresso may help, but uh, again, nothing new on race day, so maybe don't go coffee. with espresso. Yeah, <laughs> you don't do espresso. Yeah, do any coffee? No. Um, yeah, to keep energy up, I think the best thing you can do if you are taking that early uh, transportation time is once you get to Fort uh, Wadsworth, you know, find where your your wave is. You know, if you're blue, green, orange, find what the color is. There'll be a lot, you know a lot of signage out there, people to help you out. Uh, then find a place to sit down, um, relax. And maybe you've taken some cardboard uh, um, uh, with you to sit, to, uh, sit down on. Usually we have straw kind of. Uh, strewn, uh, strewn about to help to, to sit down on so you don't get a wet bum if you do sit down. There will be tents. Uh, most of the flaps will be up uh, for this year. Again, trying to keep that airflow and the ventilation. Um, but just find somewhere to sit down. Uh, just relax. You know, you hope, you know, it'll take you probably about, depending on your transportation, if your transportation is 630, plan on an hour to an hour and a half to get over to uh, Fort uh, Wadsworth, which gives you about you know, three and a half to four hours on the island. Take something to read, a magazine, a book that you plan to leave behind because obviously you don't want to carry that with you. Um, but just take, take it all in. The time does move fast. It's incredible how fast four hours can fly by. Um, but definitely bring some extra layers as well uh, to keep yourself warm. Uh, there will be good wheel bins uh, inside the corrals for you to uh, drop off any layers that you may want to shed before you start to run. Um, yeah, but don't think that you know, four hours is going to be forever. You'd be surprised how fast it goes. 
Indeed. All right. We have a lot of questions. We're trying to get to as many as we can, so bear with us. Uh, Christian, do we throw away our face masks just before starting? Yeah, Christian, try not to. Again, you are on the bridge. We don't want those, you know, face masks to be going out into the East River. If, uh, if you can, you know, by all means, try to keep it in your pocket. If you, uh, if you have a pocket on your shorts or try to make it across the bridge, maybe put it up on your arm a little bit. I see a lot of people doing that or hold on to it or put it somewhere where it's not going to be in your way. Uh, try to find a trash can at all means, please. You know, we try to be environmentally friendly out there. Obviously, you know, uh, if you choose not to, if there's nothing around there, you know, understand if you want to doff it early, but if, by all means, if you can, try to find a proper place to, um, a, a receptacle, or if you can even carry it the whole race, even better. Thank you. Okay, Chelsea, are there volunteers at the start to help stretch us? Uh, I, I don't know if they're volunteers. I know there are some tents out, out there um, to try to help you uh, stretch out, but if any warm-ups that you're choosing to do before the race should be somewhat light, somewhat easy, Again, you want to probably be sitting down, taking it, get yourself off your feet as much as you can. Maybe get a warm up, you know, half hour or 40 minutes before you get in the corral. Uh, once you're in the corral, you probably have a good 40 minutes or so before they break those down and start walking you up uh, to the to the uh, start line. Um, so uh, any kind of stretching that you may 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 want to do, you can probably just do on your own some light stretching that you have. Uh, a very light uh, uh, warm up. Again, you got 26.2 miles, so save that save that energy for as long as you can. Excellent. All right, Kelsey, how will the weather be? I'm wondering how to shed layers and stay warm prior to the race. So I'll, I'll take that, give you a second to <laughs> grab a drink of water. I just realized I keep reading them and like, blah, blah. Um, yeah, the weather, you know, obviously depends on where you come from uh, all over the country, all over the world. You might feel like it's super cold or it's, or it's mild, but essentially it's going to be in the low, in mid 40s at the start. And throughout the day, it will climb to, you know, fortunately low 50s, uh, which is, Seems like maybe a little bit chilly of a day, but for running, it's actually ideal weather. So in terms of clothing, okay. it's always smart to layer up. So you could always take off layers while you're running if you get too warm, but you can put on layers that you don't have. So I would say, you know, start the day with a, a long sleeve and maybe a, a t-shirt or a tank top underneath and run with that. Because if you run with a long sleeve, you can always roll up the sleeves later on in the day if you feel a little warmer. Um, and if you get a lot warmer, you could kind of shed that off, but you can put something on that you don't have. So definitely plan on having a couple layers on top because it's definitely gonna be a little bit chillier at the start before you, you actually get moving. And then as you start to run, maybe you have about two, three miles in, everybody's different, um, you'll warm up. So that's the advice we give, and that's actually what we do ourselves. So good luck. I'll let you. Uh, uh, Julia, how strict is moving up in a corral or wave? It's very strict. The volunteers are given you know, very you know, clear instructions by our volunteer team to, you know, check every bib that comes in. Again, we want runners to be in their appropriate corrals at all times. And, and we ask you the courtesy to your fellow runners to please, you know, try to go in the, the corral you're supposed to be in. Again, you can always step back, uh, but, you know, please, for the courtesy of those around you, the volunteer staff, um, you know, please try to go in the corral of, that you have been assigned. I know some people are saying, oh, I'm faster than this. It's going to be okay. You're going to have space. I mean, Again, we're trying to spread the waves out. You know, in a typical year, we have 55,000 people that run a race. We're down to 35 for this year. So just in general, that plus, you know, an extra wave in general, you will find more space. So you breathe in, you, you'll be fine. And please, you know, respect the race, respect the rules of the race, and, you know, please try to go in your assigned corral. Thank you. Colleen, can we move to a different color wave if our friend is in it? Same start time, but we're in green and orange, respectively. I don't know if you're allowed to move between the color waves. Um, you're not allowed to move that, so unfortunately that's not going to be the case. You are, I mean, obviously if you're in the same wave and, and she's in C and you're in E, she can drop back with you. Yeah, but in terms of staying within the color, yeah, if you're, you know, blue, green, orange, that's where you're going to be. Yeah. Uh, so again, and please respect that. You know, don't give the volunteer a hard time. Don't try to, you know, shake them down or anything. <laughs> you know, those things, you know, just, you know, be, be kind. You know, again, the, the race will come together at some point. Um, if you are trying to run together, you know, I'm not telling you, you know, text or call each other to find out where you, where, uh, where you are, but you probably know what each other is going to wear. You know, the, the race will come together. You'll see each other at some point around the 5K or mile, a mile, mile four, and then mile eight, you will converge. So maybe you'll find yourself together out there again, even if you're starting at different waves. Yeah, exactly. Megan, will family and friends be able to get near the finish line to watch me cross? Um, it's a good question. So if they buy tickets to the Blue, Lo Blue Line Lounge, they will, because those uh, bleachers, which we saw this morning being built on the uh, east and west side of the finish line. So that's one surefire way. I would go to the TCX New York City Marathon website. Grand Grandstand tickets, sorry. Uh, I said Blue Line Lounge, but Grandstand tickets. 
Um, so yeah, you could buy those tickets if they're still available, go on the website. Otherwise, you could kind of, you know, it'll be several, several people deep, but they could gather around the Columbus Circle area where the runners come off of Central Park South and make that right-hand turn into the park. But it really depends on how much they want to see of you and where they want to see you, whether it's along First Avenue or in Brooklyn. Um, so, you know, you kind of pick your spots and they'll, you know, if they're tracking you, they'll know where you are and can plan accordingly. Sarah coming at us, said, do you recommend meeting loved ones after the race south of the finish line or north? Would near the Museum of Natural History be okay? Yeah, it's always, you know, again, plan for what you're going to be. Again, all the runners, you have just run the race, you have to exit at the south end on 63rd Street. So if you're going to meet them back up at the Museum of Natural History, that means now you in turn have to walk back up, you know, the half mile plus another half mile to get back up to the Museum of Natural History. That's again, that's up to you. You may be feeling spry and fresh after your 26.2 mile uh, run, so maybe you want to go back up there. Um, you know, the, easier, the easy recommendations are try to meet south of that. Obviously, there will be a lot of congestion. Um, you know, some of the cross streets are going to be very difficult uh, from, you know, from Broadway to cutting cross, cutting um, west to east for loved ones to get across. They will be closed off. They will not be allowed to go through there. Um, so just pick a place. Um, you know, if I had to kind of give a, you know, a, a, you know, a recommendation, I would say probably find something south or depending on where, you're, where your, ho your hotel is or where you're going to be staying after the race, maybe make that a closer um, meet-up uh, meet point. That way you're going in the direction of where a shower, warm clothes, and hopefully some post-race celebration will be taking place. Indeed. All right, Billy, I'm in wave five and start at noon. It's going to be dark at 4.45. Should I run this? This? <laughs> <laughs> It, it's <laughs> we will still say no. Do not run too fast, Billy. Yeah, do not go out too fast. It was, it was, this is <laughs> verbatim, right? Was it Billy? It was the same yeah. guy. Yeah, we're good. Billy's Continue. persistent. You know, what? I tell you what, Billy. If you if you ask again, yes, yeah. go for Crush it. it. Yeah, he are that five k. Yeah, my friend. but uh, yeah, no. No matter when you start, there'll be other runners out there, and there'll be great course support, crowd support, and again, if you have a great group of friends, family that are watching you. They'll be out there. So, yeah, don't worry too much. The sun will go down around 4.45, but it doesn't actually get dark right then and there, fortunately. And it is daylight savings time. So for those of you uh, unaware of that, when you go to bed on Saturday night, when you, when you wake up, it's fall back. Yeah. Spring forward, so your extra clock sleep. will go back. Yeah, so you get extra sleep, but just don't sleep so extra that you yeah. miss your start time. So, Billy, unlike the Elton John song, uh, the sun will go down on you if you're coming up at 4.45. So. There you go. We got Elton John references. Check got that out. Music, musical reference, my friend. Here we go. All right, Julia, I'm not a coffee drinker. <laughs> so, Ben, is there coffee at the start? Yes, Duncan, our great sponsor, will be out there. There will be coffee. There will be bagels. There will be bananas. Uh, and usually they have those cool hats that usually yeah. make it till about mile three for me, and then I throw that hat away. I've never actually gotten one all the way through the 22 miles. Yes, Duncan will be out there. Uh, look for that. Look for the line. Look for the, the zombie walk of every runner looking for coffee that needs to get a little shot before they get going. But yeah, check, check it out out there. Uh, again, you know, find, find what you need. Uh, a bagel and the bananas would be good for a second uh, a breakfast if you have a long wait or just simply something to kind of keep your energy stores nice and high to go along with that fresh cup, cup, cup of joe. Excellent. Uh, Diana, if, my, if, my miss, if I miss my bus, can I take a later bus? Yeah, of course. You know, we want you to get to the start line. You know, they're not going to say, oh, you missed it. Sorry, you know, grab an Uber, uh, find a way to get there. Um, the key is just showing uh, every time you go on one of the, the ferry or the bus, you just have to show your bib to get on. They're not going to be looking to make sure you're on the right time. We do ask you to try to go again at the time you are assigned because we want to keep the spacing out. You are assigned to a certain transportation based off of your start time. So again, keep that in mind. But yeah, if you do miss it, hopefully you don't oversleep. Uh, if you have subway, if you have, you know, the subway you're on is giving you, you know, you know, a, um, you know, a hard time. Hopefully not the one train that goes to the Upper West Side, but it does happen. <laughs> the uh, Wi-Fi train. <laughs> the Wi-Fi train. Um, yeah, you will get on your transportation. Uh, don't worry. Don't stress. You know, no need to you know, race before the race. Go out too fast or try anything new. There you go. All right, Sarah, does the app notify folks when we've left the area of Central Park or runners only area? Yeah, mile 27. Yes. As you cross out, as you cross through the finishing area, you actually cross through a mat, uh, through a mat that will ping that says, you know, your runner has crossed through mile 27. Uh, that way they know that you're on Central Park uh, west at that point, heading down. And obviously, depending on how fast you can make that walk, will determine how quickly you get down there. Uh, but yeah, they will know, obviously, when you cross the uh, finish line and then how long it takes you from there. You know, that 0.8 miles to the mile 27 match uh, on your way in. So, yeah, the app is great. Download it. Android, Apple stores, get it. Follow, uh, follow all your friends and family. Uh, follow Coach Roberto if you'd like. <laughs>
<laughs> don't, don't follow me. <laughs> yeah, save your data, don't follow me. Uh, Julia, do we get our time splits immediately after finishing? Yes, yeah, yeah. and I mean, you get them, but literally, as Coach Daniel was just saying, your friends and family who are tracking you are going to get that in real time, and they'll actually even be getting a projected finish time. So as early as 5K, uh, you know, obviously it's early in the race, but they'll say, oh, they've crossed 5K in 25 minutes, they're expected to finish in so-and-so time. So, yeah, you won't have to worry about that, and that's why we said, yeah, cross the finish line, click your watch, et cetera, but maybe click it a few strides after the finish line, so that way you'll have a ballpark idea of your finish time, but you could get an awesome finish line photo. Definitely. Prem, does the GPS signal, or does it bounce around certain parts of the course? Yeah. Um, the GPS signal, especially on First Avenue, um, and just in general, because again, there's 35,000 of you out there. I mean, everyone's pointing the same satellite signals that they can, whether it be a watch, a phone, whatever device you have on you at that point. Uh, and then again, the tall buildings here in New York, especially as you get over the bridge into Queensboro, uh, First Avenue, uh, you may find yourself all of a sudden running up the side of a building that's you know 65 stories tall. When you look at your GPS later, congratulations, we will not call you Spider-Man. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> I, I've run on water before, which I really like, but uh, all, you see, all of a sudden you find yourself on yeah. the river. Yeah. But, one. you know, the thing is that, you know, don't worry too much about it because yeah. the course is 26.2 miles. I've run it for the last several years, and I don't think I've ever finished and had 26.2. I've had 26 point this, point that. So, you know, you might do a little bit of math when you're looking at, at your watch. And, you know, if you're focusing really on your effort and you're kind of dialed in, you'll, you'll be able to have an idea of how, how you're going. And then the time is not irrelevant, but it's not always not going to be um, – it's going to be accurate to what you're running. But if you're running 26.8 miles right. – it's not going to be reflective of that. Yeah, and as you cross those 5K mats, there will be a clock. So you will be able to see like what your time is. So even if you're looking at things aren't quite right, I'm, I'm not supposed to be, that, that clock will give you an accurate position of where you are at that particular mile, at that 5K marker, whatever, whatever it may yeah. be. So quick math, keep your mind going. There you go. Erica, the course shuts down six and, a half, six and a half hours after wave one or wave five. Asking for a friend. Erica, I love that. Asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, the course closes down or starts to close down after the very last runner crosses the start line. So what that means is uh, Ben and I might both start, let's say, at noon and at the very end of the wave. But if I cross five minutes before Ben, we don't have the exact same time. I actually have a five-minute head start in, in the sense of when the course finishes. So as soon as Ben... Can I have a head start this year? Why yeah. Why you know, head start? Why in this start? hypothetical, because I'm the pacer. <laughs> um, but yeah, so in this hypothetical, you know, it, it starts to close down um, after the very last finisher. So unless you are that last finisher, you would be the, the standard bearer. Jackie, what time did they reopen 59th Street to cars? Asking for a friend. Asking for a friend. Uh, 59th Street, I'm not, uh, is it 7.30? Yep, 7.30. Yeah, oh, you can hear in my ear? <laughs> yeah, I can hear everything. Yeah, on, thanks, on, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. 59th Street will open up at 7.30. So, again, as you come off the bridge, you know, again, you, there will be areas in the course that they, you may be directed onto the uh, sidewalk, depending on where you are at the time of day um, to come through. So, just listen for those instructions. Uh, there will be, you know, there'll be a van out there around the six-and-a-half-hour mark or so, you know, to kind of let people know what's going on. But there will be clear instructions at that point uh, if you do have to move off the course for your safety, uh, as we do have to get the roads back open. But do not worry. The finish line will stay open. Uh, we love our finishers, whether you're coming in, you know, regardless of your time, we want those finishers to come in. Our volunteers are waiting for you. Some staff will be there. Sometimes even the pros come back out uh, to cheer you along. Um, it's an emotional moment for a lot of people to come in, regardless of your time. The final finishers, we love to be out there. We have the lights up. So don't worry, even if you're on the sidewalk late, the finish line will remain open. You will get your medal, your HSS bag, the walk off. You will get the wonderful full experience. All right, next question. Melody, when you reference running in your assigned wave, this is, the f this is for the start only. If your pace is faster than your assignment, do you have to fall back? Your reference running your assigned wave. Yeah, so again, when you're going into your, in the, your bib will have the, the color of the wave you're in, your orange, green, or blue will have your, uh, the wave number, one, two, three, four, five, as well as your, as your, as your corral. What we're asking is to make sure that you go into the appropriate color. That's the key. You have to be in the color regardless of when you start. Now, if you're in wave one and you want to wait, if you're in the back of wave one and you prefer to start at the front of wave two, that's fine. You can wait an extra, I think it's about 40 minutes or so. I think nine, 910 is when the first wave yeah. goes off around five, and you have like 955 is when the next one. So if you want to hang out at Fort Wadsworth for another 45 minutes or so, totally up to you. You can step back, staying in the same color you're in, and then just move to the front of wave two. That's totally fine. 
Again, you can't move up. So if you're in wave two and your friend's in wave one or you simply want to get into wave one, we please ask you kindly do not try to push that with the volunteer. They have been given instructions to you know, not allow those runners. You know, so again, we kindly ask that you try to stay where you are, but you are free to move back. That is of your own you know, choice and if you choose to do that. But again, you know, do what you have to do. But yeah, try to stay where you are and, and pick the best thing for you. Mitch, do you have tips about diet in these next couple of days before the race? So um, we'll try to take this relatively quickly. Um, the, 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 shortest, the short of it is that you should, have, you should be doing now, today's Thursday, the race is Sunday, so you should be doing more or less what has gotten you to this point. If you're running the marathon, unless it's on a lark, which congrats, <laughs> um, you've done several long runs. You've done maybe three, maybe four, maybe more. Uh, you've done medium long runs, midweek long runs, et cetera. So you should know what works best for you as far as what you like to have for breakfast uh, the morning of your long run, um, what you eat the night before, and, you know, maybe even that day. So I would just say kind of stick to that. You know, a lot of times we're here by carbo loading, pasta dinners, and, like, yeah. if you have been doing your long runs where you've been going absolutely mental and smashing through all the pasta in your house the night before, <laughs> then go for it because that's, again, nothing you unraced. But if you haven't done that, don't suddenly look for the best Italian restaurant in New York City, which I hear there are a lot of and just eat all the pasta you can because they might not sit right with you. So I would just say there's really no magic bullet, as they say. Just stick to what has worked for you thus far. Yeah. Um, and just, again, everything in, in moderation. Don't eat, don't overeat just because, oh, my longest long run was 20 miles or 21 miles, but this is six or, or five miles longer, so I need to eat that much more. Like, it doesn't quite work that way. So just make sure you have a great balanced meal the, the days before a good dinner the night before, and then just eat for breakfast what has worked for you, regardless of what you come across in the Fort Wadsworth. So it's not a pound of spaghetti per mile run? <laughs> <laughs> if you're a competitive eater, I don't know. That, that's a different course strategy. There we go. There yeah, we go. cooking with Coach Ben. <laughs> At 3 o'clock. Yeah. Um, Shy, is there a medal engraving, Ben? Oh, heck yes, there is. Marathon Monday, the day after the... In Incredible time, yes, at the pavilion at the finish line in Central Park. We will be offering medal engraving. Bring your medal. Hope to see you there. Come and get it done. Memorialize all your hard work. Excellent. Nicole, can you confirm the street, the runner's exit, once we get our ponchos? I believe it is 72nd Street. Yeah. It is 72nd Street. We come across. You exit at 72nd Street. And that, that's a frozen zone. So even if your loved one's there, there will be fences around it. It may feel a bit more like, like a red dawn. For those of you who have seen that, no one can get, no one can get out. But that's you'll a be hell inside of a the, reference. <laughs> you, may, you, you, you may feel a little beat up at that point. But, uh, yeah, again, you'll be coming there. The runners will be there at 72nd Street. Uh, then you'll walk yourself down at 63rd to exit into the family zone. Yeah, and all that information is on the app, which you will be downloading, as we've mentioned. Yes. All right, Shalom. Where do I put my bib when layering up? Oh, you, you answered this earlier. Go for it. The innermost layer, because again, if you're throwing off layers, the last thing you do is pull off that long sleeve and forget your bib is on. And all of a sudden, your bib is back at mile seven, and you don't realize until mile 16, and you're like, now what do I do? So bib, innermost layer. That way, when you shed stuff, the bib stays with you. Yep. Carmen, can I wear a pouch around my waist? Yes. That's, that's the short of it, yes. Yeah. You just can't wear a backpack or any hydration device that goes over the shoulders. That kind of mimics a backpack. And there's a lot of those out there that a lot of us have used during our training runs for carrying our hydration. But on race day, handheld water bottle or, you know, uh, a pouch, yeah. fan, fanny pack, I think they call them yeah. sometimes. The, yeah. yeah, the haste belts are good to go. Yeah. Julia, can spectators come to the, to the expo? Uh, as a registered runner, you are allowed your plus one. If you have more than your plus one, uh, the, the burden falls on you to pick who your plus one is going to be. Uh, so you'll only be allowed one guest in there. The general public, unfortunately, will not be allowed to come in. You will have to have at least your registration confirmation for yourself to get in. And then, obviously, you'll learn to who your plus, uh, your plus one. And anybody who's coming into the Jacob Javits Center will have to show proof of vaccine uh, to enter in there. You'll have to wear your mask at all time. Um, if you're just looking for, for, for gear or you want to show your uh, loved ones, you know, some of the cool stuff that you may, you may be buying, 320 West 57th Street, the New Balance uh, Run Hub at the Run Center. You can come down there. Uh, anyone is allowed to go in there to check out what's going on there. And then again, Marathon Monday at the Pavilion. Uh, maybe when you get your medal engraved, you can pick up more stuff, show your love, your, 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 all your loved ones the finish with gear, and uh, pick up some, something extra for yourself. All right. Florence, where can we find the post-race exit map you showed for planning our meetup? Uh, as I mentioned, you can find it on the app, so you can download that wherever you download, whether it's uh, uh, Apple, iOS, or Android, 
and it's a TCS New York City Marathon app, and you'll find that and a whole host of other information there. Jeff, my wife is going to be in the grandstands. Any thoughts on where we'll be able to meet if she's in there? Um, again, she'll exit the, after you come through, she'll have to exit the grandstands to, uh, to wherever you're predetermined. Meetup spot will be wherever that, that will be. Uh, she'll probably be on the east side of uh, grandstands, I'm guessing. She'll probably have to go under at 63rd Street. Uh, she'll kind of exit out where you will, so maybe you can connect there. Uh, but again, just have that meetup spot predetermined, pre-planned, because uh, again, you may have marathon brain. You're going to be maybe a little bit cold. Um, I have that already. Yeah, that already. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why I said blue light and lounge earlier. Yeah. The blue light and lounge. So yeah. So again, uh, wherever wherever you predetermine where that's going to be, uh, anything close to the finishing area will be obviously more uh, more congested, more crowded. Uh, but again, just try to get that all planned out so you're not having to race that before or after the race. Yeah. Stacy, will can you ask? Can you <laughs> KT? Yeah, KT. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Take two. The marathon Will KT tape be available in the medical center? You know what? I'm going to stick with it. Will kinesiology <laughs> tape? Oh, just not getting through it. I mentioned I have marathon. <laughs> we just tape the tape for the brain today. <laughs> Will KT be available after the race? <laughs> We're keeping it light, folks. <laughs> no stress. I am going to get that. <laughs> the, the short answer is yeah, there will be a recovery. <laughs> Thumbs up. It will be there. <laughs> well, hopefully you won't need to be taped up after the race, but any reason if you do. Oh, Lord. The, I just got really warm. <laughs> that's recovery zone. So, uh, will be there. Um, yeah, again, they're trying to, tr trying to limit the, the, uh, the, the, you know, the points of contact, but if you are in need of medical attention, yes, they will help you out in every way, shape, or form to get the KT tape. <laughs> I want another crack at it. Oh, man. I can see it in my head. I just, the words are oh, yeah, okay. communology tape. <laughs> just, all right, next question. Uh, uh, Darren, can we take multiple honey <laughs> things at the nutrition station? Uh, yeah, I mean, if you've, if you've trained with it, definitely. But, you know, nothing you, un, nothing you on race day. So, yeah, if, if you could take uh, within reason as many as you can. You obviously... Don't run by with a with a, with a shopping bag. Oh God! I can't use this. And we don't have a commercial break, so we're just gonna push through. All right, uh, it's a marathon. All right, I am warm. Yeah. Uh, Elena, Coach Ben, Tester, not running. Uh, will I see you cheering? Yes. Well, that's an I'll, easy one. Yes, yeah, exactly. Take a deep breath here. Thank yeah. you for the uh, the breakup question. Yes. Yeah. I will be cheering. I will be on Fort Wadsworth in the morning. I'm helping out with the uh, pasty. Stop making me laugh. Um, there will be a cheer zone in the Bronx, of course, because the best borough, uh, 138th, as you come off of Ryder, uh, there will be a huge cheer zone up there. Uh, look for the lovely NYR coaching jackets will be up there. I will be at the finish line as well, so I'll try to track down as many people as I can. But uh, if I do not see you, I will try to find you after. I mean, tracking, it's got to be like 150 people in my tracker on my app right now, so I'll try to track as wow. many people as I can. Because, Goodbye, yeah, battery. Yeah, I'm going to take a couple, about four chargers uh, with me. But, Elaine, I hope to see you out there. Have a great race. I've been watching your training from afar. You look fit. You look fantastic. Go get it. Awesome. Kinesiology tape. There, I got it. <laughs> there you go. Kinesiology Crushed it. tape. Yeah. Nailed it. All right, Teresita, will a picture of a vaccinated card be enough? Yes. If you have the picture on your phone, that is enough. If you have the real card, that's fine too. Any government approved apps, you know, if you have the Excelsior app here from New York, uh, there's a couple other apps from New Jersey, Connecticut. If your state has one, that works fine. Anything to show that when you come in along with your government issued ID. Uh, to verify your your identity will be good enough to get you your passport into the Javits Center. All right, this will be the last question, but we'll be on again later on today. So if you want to tune in and ask more questions, we'll hopefully get to them. But um, watch Ira, this all apart. <laughs> yeah, hey, kinesiology tape. There, I got it. So, um, Ira, for my long runs, I ate the night before, but nothing except gels in the morning before getting out at 7 a.m. With a noon start, how should I time what, when to eat? It's a great question. Yeah, again, I mean, because you have a later start. I mean, I think we you dub into that second breakfast a little bit. So you maybe want to, like, hold off on the gels. I mean, maybe you have an iron stomach. It's like a lot of gels to go out with. But, again, if, if your stomach can handle that much, more power to you, go for that. But, you know, I would definitely look at, you know, a second breakfast. You know, in your in the village bag, you can bring a clear bag with, with you to the start line. To the, start, the start village that will stay there. It will not be come with you across, you know, the line. You can't check it when you're there. Um, if you want to drop some food in there to kind of have a second breakfast, kind of keep your fuel stores up and going, uh, go for it. You can have gels in there if you need to. Whatever you prefer to eat uh, works great. 
Um, but yeah, have it in, you know, in a clear bag. You can bring it uh, with you. As I said before, Duncan will be out there. There'll be bagels that'll be chopped up and, and, and some bananas. As long as you've been you know, fueling with that before, uh, give it a shot. But uh, yeah, you know, bring what you need because you're going to be there for a few hours. You want to keep your stores as topped off as possible. All right, there you go. Well, um, <clears throat> God, I, it's still in my head. Um, <laughs> the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you uh, to you viewers out there, especially you first-time marathoners. Yeah. We're really excited to welcome the world, but yeah. obviously there's, you know, your first marathon is always special. So hopefully through the, through the laughs and bloopers, we've helped you along <laughs> with your course strategy. As Coach and uh, myself always say, Coach Ben and I always say, nothing new on race day. Avoid the race before the race. Don't go out too fast. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you all out there along the course on Sunday. Thank you very much.